I've been doing our case reviews for a long time now, and I've pretty much generally done them in the same way the entire time, but I'm gonna mix it up finally with the first case being the Master Case Maker 5T from, well, Cooler Master. The way that I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take it out of the box, we're gonna look at all the features or do the, the case walkthrough from the front I.O. to the inside and all that kind of fun stuff like we normally do, and then I'm gonna build a computer into it, but I'm gonna do all of this live on set so that you guys can come along with me throughout the creation process and get my first hand experience building with the case. Come along with me. Tunnel Bear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse privately and enjoy a more open internet. Try Tunnel Bear for free at the link below. To start us off, right in the top we have another box. It's a box that's within a box that is encased around a case. Don't worry about it. It says Cooler Master on it. It's made of metal, has a foam thing on the bottom, which is nice so it won't scratch up your table. And inside, there are accessories with their own little individual components, which is awesome, but we will go more into that later when we're actually building the computer. Then we have a user manual, but who needs that? And that's what I'm here for anyways. And then, there is a microfiber cloth. This is included because there's a tempered glass side panel on here and you're probably gonna wanna clean it off because those things collect fingerprints and everything else like crazy. The foam that comes with it, I can tell you right now, is pretty awesome. Look how thick that is. It's freaking huge. And like if you press into it, it doesn't actually break, but you can see where I punched it. It's pretty good. The case itself has a big handle on it, which I'm obviously gonna have to have some fun with. Let me just get it out of here. Oh, there's even more foam on the back of the case. That seems slightly unnecessary, but I'm not gonna complain about more packing foam because there's a higher percentage chance that your case will come intact. This is one of very few cases that I've seen lately that actually comes with the tempered glass on the actual case and it looks pretty damn good. But we'll come back to that later. First, we're gonna start with the front I.O. So I'm gonna do a nice little peel for you guys. Everyone seems to love that. One gripe I'm gonna give them, while the peel is nice, they put a whole bunch of gloss right where people are gonna to have to put their hands. So this area is gonna look terrible after a little bit of use. There's four USB 3 ports, a headphone and microphone jack, a reset button, and a power button, both of which seem nice and satisfying and clicky to press. And then you have a fan speed and fan lighting mode control as there's a hub, which we'll be able to check out later on. But I don't know which one is which because they left them unlabeled. And you can actually see, if I just do this, how like grody this front panel gets after <laughs> Just a little bit of touching it, which is a little bit unfortunate. The front of the case actually pulls forward, if you just do that, because you can put optical drives in the front or fan hub controls. So, yeah. If you eject your drive, I'm assuming the drive might push this open, but if you have an optical drive in this year, I would be pretty surprised anyways, so. Moving up to the top of the case, we actually have a pretty surprising amount of features. On the back here, we have a trapezoid-like plastic panel, which can be removed if you want more airflow, or kept on if you just want the more consistent aesthetic. At the front, you've got another area for your fans to breathe, and then right behind that, under the handle, there's some angular slots, which look pretty cool, and also feed a little bit more air to those top fans. It's obviously not gonna breathe as much as if the entire top was open, but it should do pretty okay. Then because it's a master case maker kind of deal. You can just pull this whole freaking thing off to access the insides. If you want to remove the handle, you can take off these two screws and this screw and then slide it backwards and off. And then if you want to be able to access where you can put your all-in-one coolers or just your top fans in general, you remove these four thumb screws and then take this whole tray off, which we will do later on for when we install our AIO. Now, of course, there's a handle, so I have to test the handle. It's been a little while since I've had a case that has a handle on it that I get to test. And this one has tempered glass on it, so it's a little heavy, but here we go. Oh my God, it's really heavy. One thing came off, that's it. And it was just the trapezoid panel that we just removed. So I can put that back 
and I think that's a pass. The left and right side panels are the same and require these keys to actually remove them. They don't have the like padded screws that a lot of the other tempered glass side panel implementations utilize. So if I just put the key in here, turn it to the right, and then try to remove the panel, it all comes off as one just like that, nice and easy. And it works that way for both sides. The first thing you will probably notice when looking inside of the case is the striking red paint job, which should go well with the light bar because they're saying if you light it up, the metallic flakes that are inside will reflect and it'll look really cool. But right behind that light bar, you have two SSD mounts. To the right of that, you have two rubber grommets, which can probably feed your PCI Express power to your graphics cards. Above that, you have more rubber grommets that can be used for like your motherboard power, your 24 pin, USB 3.0, all that kind of fun stuff. Above that, you have little cutouts for like fan power cables and your CPU power, and then a motherboard cutout for easy CPU bracket mounting. And down at the bottom again, you have a couple more cutouts for things like your your HD audio, and maybe your front panel headers. Just to the right of that, we have the Freeform Modular System. That's these series of holes where you can install a whole bunch of different stuff like reservoirs, or in this case, a GPU holder bracket thing, which you can pivot and raise and lower if you use the little thumb screws that are on there to support your graphics card so you don't have the ever ugly looking graphics card sag at the end of the card. Looks gross, isn't good for it. Just this. So you can just put that on here, which is nice and cool. To the right of that, and up a little bit, you have the optical drive tray and a place that you can put like fan control hubs and stuff like that, although the case has one on the back, so I don't know why you'd bother put one there. Uh, I don't expect this to get used all that much, but oh well. Down from there, you have a big hole that was cut out. That's so you can fit tall radiators. If you take out the hard drive tray that is in the bottom, you can fit tall radiators in here for 120 millimeter by two or 140 millimeter by two. Moving around to behind the motherboard tray, we can see the fan and LED controller hub, which supports one, two, three, four, five, six different fans, which are all three pins, although I'm sure you could somehow configure a four pin onto there and four different LED strips, but these have to be free form LED strips. These do not work with the 2020 plugs that you'll see on a lot of like mass market LED strips. Down here, there's the back side of the hard drive cage that we saw in the front and the other side of our rubber grommets, along with a whole bunch of like Velcro styled cable management loops, three of them in a row, and a bunch of notches in various places that they're often already using for cable management, like going up to your eight pin slot. And with that, I think it's time to build. So let's get to it. First thing I'm gonna do is actually remove the graphics card support thing because it's sort of in the way of me installing stuff, but luckily that's rather easy to do. Install my IO plate from my motherboard and get that guy in there right away. No, I'm not. I need some of these. So Cooler Master gives you a huge thing which is all labeled, so used for side panel, used for top fan, used for motherboard tray, power supply, and fan cage, used for motherboard tray, etc., etc., etc. There's a huge baggy thing of them, series of them, but they don't reseal or anything, so once you open this, you're done. But that being said, you still have these little slots in their tray that they gave you that are unused, so you could just keep using the parts tray and put the stuff that you take out of it in there. So it's not too bad. Before we move on, I actually said something wrong earlier. It's not just a 2x120 or 2x140mm radiator and fan setup you can do in the front. If you take out the optical drive tray by removing four thumb screws and just sliding it out, you can access this area, add this little accessory that I found in the box, the accessories box, up into the top bit, and then you can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator and fan setup as well if you want to expand your cooling even further. And with that, we will continue the build. Okay, finally time to put the motherboard actually in the case. Okay, the motherboard is installed. I'm gonna take a look at this light bar that they have in here. So they had it taped in when it first showed up, but it actually has a magnet on the back. You can see the, the black backing isn't just black backing. There's a, there's a bulge over here, and I'm assuming there's another magnet over here as well. And you can just place it onto the case and it sticks there, even without the tape which is pretty cool and means that you can move it around kind of however you want. If you want it to go for whatever reason on an angle back here, you could do that. Or if you wanted to run it all the way along the side, 
you can do that as well, which actually might look better. We'll see where I decide to end up leaving it, but I'm gonna put it there for now. That could look pretty sweet. Next up, we're gonna install the power supply. I really like it when case manufacturers include these external power supply bracket thingies. I just find it makes it a lot easier to install things, especially because I like installing all the cables for my power supply first, so that it looks something like this. I know everything that's gonna be plugged in and I get it all set up. And then all I need to do is screw this bracket onto my power supply, dangle all my cables through and put my power supply in. I don't have to worry about like jamming it in through the side or any of that junk, and it just seems to work better for me. And there we go. The installation of the actual power supply is done. Now I just need to stand the case back up and route all the cables. One nice thing about their SSD trays is that you can put the SSD inside of it and have the nice flat black top and have it all be stealthy and stuff, or you can show off, put the SSD on top of it, screw the SSD in through the inside and display it that way, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna do that. Of course, I'm leaving the cooler to last. So there's just inevitably gonna be a huge catastrophic issue, which is gonna make me take apart my entire build in order to install the cooler. I'm just calling it right now. It's gonna happen, it's my fault. I take all responsibility right now. I have to say, I absolutely love it when you can just install the radiator outside of the case into a bracket and then just drop that bracket inside of the case. I hate trying to work with the full case just to install the damn radiator. It gets so frustrating and it's just so much easier to do it this way. I'm gonna to try to turn it on while it's on its side, just to make sure it works. What the hell? What was that? Is the board smoking? Is there something crazy? Oh! <laughs> what the f Something's dead. Like, if you smell this, it, it's bad. Oh! Can you smell that? I haven't seen anything specific yet. Something dead. Yeah, you can smell it, right? Yeah. Um, That's supposed to happen. It's funny. I don't think it's the power supply, though. It's definitely in here somewhere. Okay, so um, something fried, and it smells really bad right now, which is why I'm wearing this. I'm not even sure if like breathing in those fumes is a good idea, so I thought I'd put a mask on. Um, I'm gonna try to take everything out and figure out what exactly fried, but I seriously doubt it's the case's fault, and the build log went pretty okay. So, so far, doing good, Master Case Maker 5T. But I do need to get to the bottom of what just fried. So that was, fun. Uh, it's never actually fun to like lose computer hardware, but it was interesting to say the very least. I thought now that it is rebuilt with a new motherboard and a new power supply and new RAM and a new CPU, just making sure that nothing's going to smoke up, uh, that I would turn it on again on camera because who knows what might happen. So here we go. Where's the power button? Voila. It works. Nothing made crazy ticking noises or started smoking or anything like that. You've got the cool light bar on the bottom. Everything's on and <sighs> I didn't waste an entire another computer worth of components. Comments about the Mastercase Maker 5T. If you liked the Mastercase Maker 5, it's pretty freaking similar. There's now a fan and light hub controller on the back. There's a handle on the top and there's tempered glass side panels. Everything you know and love from the previous one is still there. And because of that, there wasn't a huge amount to comment on throughout the build. It's a wonderful case. If you want tempered glass, that's awesome. If you want a handle, 
Not enough computer cases these days come with handles. This one has a very sturdy handle. I'm not even worried about it now, and honestly, with everything in this thing, it's rather heavy. Anyways, overall review, it's good. It's not surprising. Tempered glass has been around for a little while, handles have existed before, uh, the light bar is kind of cool, but I kind of think I need more of it. We have teamed up with Razer to bring you guys another giveaway. One lucky winner will get a Death Adder Elite mouse, an Ornata keyboard, a Kraken V2, and a cloth. A cloth? And five other lucky winners will get a Kraken Pro V2 headset. Some of the features of the Kraken Pro V2 include larger drivers, a lightweight frame, a headband designed for better weight distribution and less clamping force, ear cushions that are larger, softer, and have better sound isolation, and you can personalize it to fit due to it being interchangeable. It's got a fully retractable unidirectional microphone, and most importantly, from the time that I've spent with it, it is just just plain way better than their last headset. So there's a definite thumbs up for that. You can enter at the link below for a chance to win. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, get subscribed, dislike it if you disliked it. Check out the link in the description down below to go to Amazon and buy some stuff like a computer case or something else. And you can look around that link and see a link to buy some of our shirts, not the sweaters. These aren't for sale anymore get wrecked. Go on the forum to talk about various computery type things and uh, check out this review which is the Mastercase Maker 5. Try to notice how many differences you can find between the two cases. I'll see you next time.